Hello and welcome to Everyday Law. It's the show that demystifies the law for you and your family. I'm your host, Attorney Robert Monahan, and I'm here with the Howe family, Ryan and Nicole. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Thanks for Great to have you on. Today we're going to be talking about estate planning and reasons why people don't plan their estates and also things that, uh, things that you should be looking for when you plan your estate. So when we talked about it earlier, we talked about a variety of reasons why people may not plan their estate. And uh, uh, one of the reasons was it was remote, a remote possibility, right? Mm -hmm. Like nobody wants to think about death, infirmity, family quarrels, taxes, <laughs> yeah. who'll be your guardian, who'll yeah. be your executor, all those things, right? Yeah. But there's other reasons too. I mean, what, do you remember anything that you guys uh, thought were reasons you may not uh, try to plan your estate? There was a whole list of them, I think. Yeah, I think um, certainly it's uh, kind of what we refer to as the tyranny of the urgent a little the bit. The tyranny right? of the urgent, yeah. yeah, yeah. The ur with, you have how many kids? We four. have four children. Four kids, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, two boys and two girls. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's always, uh, you know, something. <laughs> you More know, pressing. Swim lessons, your attention. gymnastics, yes. grocery yes. shopping, cleaning it's the house. Survival. Working, survival, <laughs> yeah, everything, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's certainly hard to make sure to dedicate, you know, uh, enough attention to it to make sure you get it scheduled and get yeah. it taken care of. And then there's the cost. You the know, cost of it, right? Yep. Who knows what it's going to cost, yep. right? Yeah. yeah, I have no idea, yeah. actually. Yeah. So. Something, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's something. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so the cost, I think, certainly is it. And then I think uh, we talked about a little bit of a misunderstanding of the actual benefits on the flip side. You right, know? right. You don't know why you need it. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot of reasons why you need it, but you may not know exactly why. Yeah. And I think I start out with uh, sometimes talking about the, your parents and sort of you may be your parents' executor or power of attorney. Mm -hmm or trustee, and you may not know what that entails, right? Mm -hmm. So um, just seeing a lawyer, I think, can be helpful for letting you know what may be coming in your own life, because a young family may not be thinking about their own mortality, yeah. but your parents, they're right. older, and they may be, they may be they may be on their way out someday. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Chances are. <At> some point, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's inevitable. Yeah, yeah. And I think one final thing I'll say, and it's, it's a reason I do the show. Mm -hmm. It's a reason I do the show, is a lot of people, um, I think we said, regard lawyers as maybe one step above used car salesmen. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But um, when we talked at your home, I think you said you didn't know a lawyer that did this kind of work. Or if I did, I didn't know that I knew one. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so even trying to figure out where to start and who can you trust and what's the best type of lawyer to go to, really clueless in yeah. a lot of that stuff. You know, I've, one of the themes of the show that we do is that everybody needs a lawyer in their life. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, for things like if you're purchasing a home, you know, why do you need your lawyer? Or if you're working with a contractor on a home repair, you know, you may think you're okay until there's a problem, and then, you know, it, it always helps to have maybe a lawyer read the contract and help you set up what's going to happen with your contractor before you start, mm -hmm. right? So everyone needs a lawyer in their <laughs> life, sure. and, and I'm, I'm happy to help you guys with your will and your trust. Um, you're coming on my show. We appreciate it. Yeah, sure, Thank sure. Uh -huh. So um, where to start? I guess the, uh, the first thing to start is to kind of list out the basic elements of an estate plan, mm -hmm. okay? So there's the, uh, there's the will, which governs things like the guardian of your children, um, who will be your executor, how all your assets are distributed, and it also does something called waiving bond. And then there's the powers of attorney, a power of attorney for health care and property. They're two separate ones. Mm -hmm. And those are for um, when, you're, when you become disabled or infirm and you're still alive, you appoint an agent to make your decisions for you. And lastly, we'll talk about um, what a trust is. Mm -hmm. Because a trust avoids or can help you avoid probate. And probate, it can be a process that may, many people want to avoid, OK? Yes, so, which is new information for yeah, us, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's start with, um, I think when we talked before, uh, I wanted to tell you that there's a lot of misconceptions about a will, mm -hmm. right? And um, you've heard about, you've seen maybe a movie where they read the will and, or, or there's a dispute about what the will says, or something like that. But um, what a will does is it's a set of instructions for when you pass away. Um, and the most useful thing I think a family needs for their will is to appoint a guardian for their children, for a young family. 
because without that, there can be a dispute about who will be the guardian, and it can involve a court proceeding that can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. So appointing a guardian is something a will can do. But before we get there, I wanted to talk about the fact that there's some misconceptions about wills, mm -hmm. okay? For one thing, it doesn't govern all your assets. Like a will, people think that a will um, controls everything when they die. Their, their children, their property, who gets it, et cetera. But a will only governs a certain number of assets, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the first uh, thing is that there's three classes of assets, so three kind of buckets, okay? So the one bucket is jointly owned assets, okay? Jointly. So jointly between owned. two of you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that means like um, anything that's titled in both your names is joint owners. Our house. Like yeah. your house. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I'm, you almost sure. <laughs> I'm almost sure you're joint owners of your home. Yeah, yeah. Thanks and then, to a good lawyer. Yeah, right. and your, your bank accounts, any joint bank accounts yeah. that you may have, those pass automatically to the other on death. Mm -hmm. So anything you jointly own with the other passes automatically to the other person. Okay. So if Ryan dies first, it goes to Nicole. Nicole dies first, it goes to Ryan. Even if you never say that or state that anywhere. Right, It's right. automatic. It's automatic. You don't need to go to court. You don't need to, um, to get anyone's approval. Mm -hmm. It just happens automatically, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The next kind of asset is called a contract asset. And a contract asset is like a 401k, where you name a beneficiary, mm -hmm. or a life insurance policy, where you name a beneficiary. So uh, one problem that some families have where they have a divorce is they forget to change all their beneficiaries. Oh. Right? Oh. <laughs> so what happens then is when, when the spouse dies, tension. it all goes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the contract assets, if they don't change their beneficiary, it goes to your, wow. your ex-spouse. Yeah. Wow. Now, will automatically changes, right? It cuts out your ex-spouse automatically mm -hmm. by operation of law, but not contract assets like life insurance policies or 401ks. Wow. Okay. So those are the two first buckets. So we talked about joint assets and contract assets, and everything else is a um, probate asset. Mm -hmm. So anything that's in your name only, that's titled in your name only, that's not jointly owned, is a probate asset. It is governed by the probate court. I think the reason that is, is to, to change title on your house, someone has to sign the deed to transfer ownership to someone else. And if, if you're dead, you can't do it. Yeah. You need to appoint a representative to do it for you, and that can only happen in probate court. That makes sense. So if Ryan dies first and the house goes to Nicole, and Nicole dies and wants to give the home to her children, she's no longer around to sign the deed, mm -hmm. and someone needs to be appointed to sign that deed over so that the house can be sold and dis the pro proceeds distributed to the children or um, given to the children. So, and that's so, what somebody has to petition to do, yeah, right? Yeah, Which right. is expensive. Yeah, 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 that's probate, yeah, yeah, yeah. So probate court involves going to court, um, and the will, you may draw up a will, and um, the probate court will pr approve the will and say, um, okay, uh, this, is this is a valid will. All the formalities were followed. We're going to uh, approve the executor and point them. But the will's not effective by itself. Mm -hmm. What the court does is issue two weeks later something called letters of office. And the letters of office appoint the executor to be um, in control of the estate. Mm -hmm. So the probate court creates the estate, which is like a separate entity then, and the executor that's appointed by the letters of office controls selling all the assets like the home and then paying all the debts that you may have and distributing everything to your children, whatever's left over. Does that make sense so yeah. far? Any, any questions about so that's that? That's a big job. That's a big job. So if you're an executor <laughs> mm -hmm. for any kind of... Um, Which I am. You are the executor mm -hmm. of your parents' estate? Mm -hmm. my, my dad. Your dad, yeah. 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 So, so you know, we should talk. <laughs> we should talk some, yeah. Yeah, some more. Yes. Because when that happens, there's certain duties you have, right. right? They're called fiduciary duties. You have the duty to look out for the estate and all the beneficiaries of the estate. Mm -hmm. And any, anything that looks like self-dealing, yes. right? Anything yeah. that looks like you've taken money for yourself, even to pay expenses, mm -hmm. Can be presumed fraud on your brothers and sisters. So oh. this is where it really helps to have a lawyer. It really you does, guys are yeah. Good at yeah. You know, the Jerry yeah. Seinfeld Protecting. I think said that lawyers, it's like we're all playing the game of life, a board game or whatever, and lawyers are the only one that read the rules before you started. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Because 
Anything you say will be held against yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. When you're a fiduciary, mm -hmm. when you're a fiduciary, so when you're a power of attorney for property, if you're the executor, you're probably also a power of attorney. Okay. I bet. <laughs> That's, That's my you guess. Should. You should yeah. find out. Yeah, I yeah. should. So if, if your parents start to suffer from Alzheimer's right. or dementia, you could be the one responsible for um, maintaining their property, yeah. making financial and healthcare decisions for them, and um, you know, basically caring for them and their assets mm -hmm. when they can't do it themselves. And what that means is when you're a fiduciary like that, you have a responsibility to um, not take anything for mm -hmm. yourself and account to the court for anything that you do. And who determines when a power of attorney steps in? At what? Who, who decides You can that? draft it differently. So they can be drafted differently. Sometimes it needs a doctor, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's immediate, depending upon how it's drafted. So ask your parents, okay. are, am I, am I, can I make decisions for you now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probate is um, it's a process that mm -hmm. starts with a petition, like we said. Um, the job of the executor, your job with your parents' estate is to to marshal all their assets, pay all their debts, distribute the remainder to the, uh, the heirs, and um, then close the estate. Mm -hmm. So is it the more well-defined your will is and your desire for your assets, is it the easier the job then? Yeah, the executive, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Kind of less Yeah, yeah. Decision the more complicated things get, the harder it is for the exe executor to carry out all the wishes, yeah. <laughs> Usually people just hopefully split things evenly among all their children, but they don't always do that. And when they disinherit a child and there's a will contest, it can be really ugly, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> or even I, I, I wonder, like, when a house is left, how you decide, do you sell that house and split up the proceeds, or if one child wants to keep the house, how do you negotiate? Hopefully, that the direction, the, wills, that the will is the set of directions for what should happen. Okay. So, so it determines whether the house should be sold or, okay. The executor has very little discretion if the will doesn't give the executor discretion to do those things. Okay. Yeah. So, so we've talked about the will. One thing you should know is, I think we talked about its jobs. It, it appoints the, uh, the executor, and the executor, again, is the one who manages the estate, who marshals all the assets, who sells the house, who pays all the debts, and then who distributes everything to the, the is heirs. Is the executor responsible for the costs incurred for mm -hmm. selling the house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it can come from the estate. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, it comes from the estate. It comes from the estate. Yeah, it. yeah. You're, you, you would pay the lawyer, but out of the estate account. Gotcha. Okay. okay. And then um, guardians for your children. That's always a tricky thing, mm -hmm. right? I, I had that same problem with my wife deciding, well, who do we want to be our guardians mm -hmm. and who would yeah. do it? Yeah. <laughs> who would do it yeah, for four our kids? Is it's, a, a, it's a big decision. Four is yeah. a lot. Not yeah, to ask yeah. Anybody. Of a family friend of my brother in New York City who's single, yeah. of, you know. <laughs> right. My parents who, you know, they're, they're getting, you know, they're, they're in their late 60s, mm -hmm. uh, would they want to do it? Who, friends who already have four or five Friends kids who have kids already, yeah, yeah. I think what we decided was um, my brother and sister-in-law in, in Connecticut, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, <laughs> we don't, yeah. you know, right? But that's, that's who we decided yeah. on, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll just, that's, that's, that was our best option. Yeah. So deciding the guardians for your kids can be very hard, but um, if, there's, if you die without a will, it's up to the court who, do, who will take care of your children. It's something that we talked about before also is that your hope is that someone would take care of it. Mm -hmm. If you die without a will, just so you know, you die intestate, and there's certain rules um, already in place in the Probate Act mm -hmm. called the Intestacy Statute, okay? And that kind of lists the people that can petition the court to care for your kids or to be appointed your executor. Okay. So it lists uh, in order like, you know, surviving spouse comes first, mm -hmm. you know, mom and dad, brothers and sisters and so on down the line. But any of them can petition. It's just a question that someone else can have priority over them. Is that the same line that the courts would go down if nobody petitioned when they're deciding who they would appoint the kids to? Would they start with that and go through those same people? I don't know. Actually, I think that... How do they decide who they would give the kids if no to? One, if no one does that, the public guardian has to make a decision. Okay. And he's, a, he's an official appointed by the state. Mm. And that is like n nothing that you ever would want yeah. to happen. So yeah. that's rare that that's somebody rare. wouldn't yeah. stand up yeah. and petition yeah. for that. Okay. It's, my most recent estate um, was a, a sister in Maryland who came and took uh, the decedent's kids back to Maryland with her, and we have to open the estate of the decedent here in, in Lake County, and then once all the uh, debts are paid mm -hmm. and the assets are all liquidated, we roll over the account into Maryland, 
and the Maryland court will oversee it for the, the youngsters in Maryland wow. until uh, they turn 18. Yeah, but in, in that case, we were lucky that um, we were lucky that there was enough. Uh, there was someone to step yeah. in to do it. It was the sister who has children of her own. Mm -hmm. But the last thing I wanted to mention was a trust, mm -hmm. okay? The usual kind of trust that we draft is called a probate avoidance trust for family like yours. And, and the reason is what usually will land you in probate court is the home, mm -hmm. okay? The home is often the only probate asset that a family will have. And Ryan, let's say you pass away first, okay. chivalry, yeah, right? yeah, and, and the home goes to Nicole. I hope so, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> when Nicole dies, someone will have to um, administer the estate in probate court because the home is a probate asset, mm -hmm. okay? But if you transfer that asset into a probate avoidance trust, um, you take it out of your name individually. Mm -hmm. So it's not your asset anymore. It's the asset that belongs to the trust. It's named in the trust. And a lot of people, when they hear the word trust, they think, oh, I don't need a trust. Um, a trust is for rich people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what it is, it's a tool where you can name a successor trustee. So when you pass away, the home isn't in your name, it's in the trust's name, mm -hmm. and, the, and you're the trustee of the trust. You're both co-trustees of the trust. The successor trustee steps into your shoes. And avoids and, probate. And avoids probate. Yeah. And then he follows the instructions of the trust, liquidates the, the home, if that's what you want to have happen, and distributes the assets to the kids outside of probate. So that's the takeaway, right? Do whatever you can to avoid the expensive of probate. probate yeah, process. I, I think that's true. <laughs> the only advantage of probate, and we talked about this a little bit too, is that it can cut off debts. Okay. Yeah. Yes. In probate court, to have a good, to have a, a power, uh, to have a, a claim on the estate, you have to go through certain steps, and sometimes creditors never go through those steps, mm -hmm. and if they don't, their claims can be written off. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay those credit card debts. You don't have to pay all those outstanding debts. But, but you're um, gambling. But yeah, you're gambling. Yeah. gambling. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's much more um, appealing, I think, to take steps to keep your family out of yeah. probate. Uh, do it soon. Mm -hmm. you know, talk to an attorney <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. take care of it beforehand. It, make, those, make those difficult decisions about who will be your guardian, who will be your executor before it's too late, you know? And uh, go ahead. Yeah, it just seems like you need to make the hard decisions or else somebody else, somebody, somebody else is gonna will, make much harder yeah, decisions. Yeah, right? right, and it will be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a selfless thing to do. Yeah, to yeah. Do How did you find out that you were the executor or the trustee of your parents' trust? Uh, my dad, just in a phone conversation, told me, FYI. FYI, you're our, you're our trustee went, now. That seems like a big job. I should probably figure out what that involves, but what, I haven't talked to him much about it. Yeah, what, um, did you have any questions after he told you that? Um, for him? Yeah. No, I need to talk to a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't know what questions to have. Yeah. How, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have four half sisters and a full brother. Mm. Um, and then it's my dad and my stepmom. Got so it. So I have no idea how they've structured their Anything, whole estate. Right? Yeah. I, I don't know what any of that looks like. Yeah, and I guess a stepbrother you would include with that. Oh, oh. yes. My stepmom's son. Yeah. So you have what's called a blended family too, right? right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So your um, your your hope would be uh, that your there'd be an equal division among mm -hmm. you and your brother, and then how many other siblings? The step siblings? Four half sisters, Four. one stepbrother. Wow. Okay. But yeah. I mean, I think it would be an equal division among all of them. Yeah. 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 So um, a lot of people involved. A lot yeah. of people involved. Yeah. Well, you think that. We're not even sure. We don't know. <laughs> your, your dad we don't know. That, right? yeah. I need to find out. And he has said, this is somewhat recent, he said we need to sit down and talk about, and talk about what it. that all looks like. Yeah, but. yeah. I had a, a client who came to see me once who said, I'm, I'm the executor and I just found out. I'm the executor and I just found out when she died and I don't know what to do. I don't know why I was appointed. It wasn't a big deal, but she didn't know. She was yeah. the neighbor. Wow. She was the neighbor who cared for the, the deceased. And they didn't even tell they her? They didn't that... tell her, no. They went to, they went to a friend of mine and, and did their will, and then they needed to probate it because she passed away. And there's, you can't, you can't um, defer you, that? You can defer oh, you it. You can. You can deny it if you want. Okay. Um, and, and then, then what? Then 
hopefully you chose a backup executor, right? <laughs> oh, wow. So when, wow. so not only do you have to choose your, so Ryan would be your executor, Ryan, Nicole would be yours, but hopefully you'd have a backup just in case there was a simultaneous death or something like that, you know? So if my dad passes away first, I still am not in the picture. My stepmom would take care of it. It's only after both of them. S pass? Say that again. If my dad passes away, mm -hmm. I don't step in as the executor. It depends. It just depends it's, how, so how he named okay. it. If he named you as his executor, then that would mean that you would step in and administer the estate. Oh. Um, okay. Yeah, and your, your, your stepmom might be... Uh, might be left second. out. Yeah, okay. she'd be second. Well, right. I think it might be then after her, I I would be if both of them pass. Away. Is that how it is? I is think that so. that would probably make more sense? Yeah, yeah. that's how most like, people okay. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's how it is. And then when you guys go about picking your guardian, I mean, it has to be someone you think would take good care of your kids and be responsible and also be willing to do it. I mean, I, I find that I found that process with my wife very difficult, yeah. and we went back and forth and in circles about. Um, what we would do. I think that's another thing that really slows down, at yeah. least for us, really slowed down with us moving process. forward yeah. with doing this because yeah. nothing feels ideal. Nothing and I think is. you just have to make peace with the fact that nothing will be ideal. Yeah. Then, you know, mm. obviously we want our kids with us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's a, an emotional thing to wrestle with, I think, of picturing the effects. And, and you got to get through all that. And it does help to know somebody's going to be making the decision. Right. If you pass away, we yeah. both pass away. Somebody has to make somebody, that decision. Somebody steps in. Somebody yeah. will yeah. step in, right? And so yeah. we need, I would rather, I think, us, us make, that, make decision that decision now. Than, yeah. And then yeah. even it was eye opening to hear that if some, like, somebody did step forward to petition, how expensive that is. It can be very expensive. Yeah. I had no Thousands idea. Thousands of dollars. I had no yeah. idea. For guardianship, yeah. right? Five to I thought if somebody dollars. stepped in and said, oh, I'll take them, and nobody contested, simple. that was it. It would be it. simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, nobody will contest it. I know that my mom would be willing to do that. I think everybody would be happy. But that's a lot of gambling yeah, to do yeah, with such yeah. a big thing. And then obviously very expensive, which I yeah, didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think the one thing that I forgot to mention and this is this goes way. So we we're talking about um, reasons that people uh, sometimes don't mm -hmm. do wills or estate plans and so on. And one of the things that I forgot to mention is like we're talking about. You may be unaware of all the consequences of not doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And one thing I forgot to mention that's important that the, the will has many functions. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the functions is to appoint your executor, appoint your guardian, distribute your assets. But another thing a will does that people don't know about it's called waiving bond. Okay. So if you don't have a will, mm -hmm. someone will have to petition the court to administer your estate mm -hmm. and take care of all the things. That's that... called waiving bond. No, oh. no, but we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> in a minute. Oh, okay. We'll get so so someone will petition the court, right. and that person is going to be appointed your administrator. Mm -hmm. That administrator will do everything that your executor should do in probate. So he'll sell your house, mm -hmm. he'll pay your debts, he'll uh, distribute all the assets to your children. But because you don't have a will and the will waives bond, he has to post a bond. And a bond is like an insurance policy. Mm. It's an insurance policy that says he won't make off with your house. Yeah. He won't sell your house and, and put it in his pocket. And then they get that back? After they get that back, okay. part of it, but you have to put up money to get it in oh, the first place. So what place. if the person doesn't have the cash to do that? You'd better hope that whoever applies to be your administrator, they'll have to do it. Wow. And the court, the court can waive it, but you have to show good reason to waive bond. Yeah. For example, in the story that I told about um, a client of mine in Maryland mm -hmm. who, uh, who came and took uh, her sister's children to Maryland and is going to mm -hmm. be their guardian in Maryland, um, we applied to the court to waive bond because really there's only the house. Yeah. It doesn't have much equity in it. It's all going to the to the children that she's adopting and <laughs> applying to right. be their guardian. She's not going to yeah. pocket the assets for herself. She's got to provide for these kids yeah. and there's almost nothing to do it with. Wow. So um, in so that case. So that's a good reason. That's, they, a good re yeah. that's another thing that the will does that I forgot to mention, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we've covered a lot. We've covered um, kind of the will and its functions, mm -hmm. the powers of attorney, uh, the guardians, um, HIPAA waivers and um, burial instructions, I think. Trust. And trusts. And trusts, yeah. and trust, thank you. That's yeah. the, one of the bigger <laughs> things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it seems like a trust is more ideal than a will. I think so. Oh, there, that's one last thing to say. When you have a trust, mm -hmm. you also have a will. Oh. And the will gives everything to the trust. 
Okay. It's called a pour over will. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it's called a pour over will because it pours everything into the trust. So right? all the things we just talked about yeah. all go into the trust. Yeah, yeah. That's in case. So one last thing to mention, when you have a trust, everything should be titled in the trust. Mm -hmm. So when, you're, when you have a trust and you create it, you get your home retitled from your names as individuals to the name of the trust and you record a deed in trust at the, the recorder of deeds office in Lake County. Mm -hmm. That means it's no longer titled in your name. It's titled in the name of the trust. And you were worried about mm -hmm. the effects of our... So you should let your mortgage know. You yeah. should let your mortgage holder mm -hmm. know. And your, uh, your home insurance know right. that that's happened. Right. And uh, I had one other point. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> and it's good to know about all, other, all the other assets that don't have like a contract or a deed. Like I think we talked about like the... Your like personal engagement property, rings, jewelry, right, right, cars. Right. So with the will, would that pour over into the trust? Do you have to name yes, them explicitly yes. then, or all your assets? Then the trustee who, uh, after you pass away, has discretion. Oh. So with the trust, you should, you should list everything you want to go to a certain individual, like your bowling shoes yeah. or your, your, your engagement ring or whatever it may yeah. be. With the trust, you should have a list of everyone and everything that you want to go to a specific person. There's Otherwise, lot, everything otherwise else is it discretion. the discretion of the trustee, which could also cause some yeah, kind of oh family yeah, problems, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So the more specific you are about yeah. the particular items, the better. The better. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This has been Everyday Law. Uh, I'm your host, Attorney Robert Monahan. I've been here with the Howe family. We've been dis discussing estate planning, wills and trusts, and so on. Everybody, have a good night. Thank you for watching Everyday Law the show that demystifies the law for you and your family. I'm your host, Attorney Robert Monahan, and you can watch our growing library of shows on our YouTube channel, Everyday Law TV. To learn more about wills and trusts, small claims court, the Lake County State's Attorney's Office, and more. If you want to reach me, please leave a comment on our Facebook page or on our YouTube page or my Twitter handle at Monahan Firm. Or finally, you can visit me at my website at www.monahanfirm.com. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.